All right, I think we are ready to start. We did give everybody um, five minutes. So um, uh, most of you already know, my name is Yuko Honda and I am the Managing Director at the Japan Society of Boston. Tonight, um, we have a very special friend of ours leading our um, cooking class tonight. Akiko Ghosh is a very close friend of the Japan Society of Boston. Uh, she's been living in Boston for over 20 years, so quite a pro, longer than I. Um, but before moving to Boston, she actually owned an Indian-themed home goods store in Tokyo and learned all the wonderful Indian items and cuisine through her husband, who is from India. Um, in Boston, she works at a, as a relocation consulting a consultant. She helps uh, Japanese people find places to live um, in Boston and adjust to life in Boston as she is, like I said, been here for 20 years. And Akiko is extremely excited to share with us her recipe of Japanese katsukare tonight. So the stage is all yours, Akiko-san. Hi. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm Akiko. I'm very glad to be here. And uh, let's cook Japanese curry together. OK, so let me start uh, heating the pan here. And while I introduce the ingredient. OK, so as in the menu, uh, what you need be needing for curry is the vegetable, potato, carrot, and onion all cut together. This is, I'm just using it, doing it for six people tonight, okay? And this is the curry, as announced, I'm using. And this whole box is for 12 plates. So tonight we're just using half of it. So you can try it again next time. Akiko-san, don't you think I, that, you know, that you're using, I see you're using bamonto kare. Yes. So I love that. You're using house bamonto kare, which is house. what I grew up in. And one mm -hmm. thing that's really exciting to note here is depending on which brand, like SMB is also another big brand, right? Mm -hmm. That makes curry. Right. It mm -hmm. tastes different. And each family has, has their own curry taste, right? Like I see Masayo-san you know, nodding. Masao-san, mm -hmm. was your house vamonto kare too, or? Yeah, vamonto kare, also golden kare as well. Sometimes oh. I mix it with other uh -huh. kind of brand. Yeah. Right, so just a little bit of, this is where actually my husband grew up on um, eto, golden kare. I grew oh. up on vamonto kare. So we I also see. mix, because it tastes different. But yeah. I, just just for everybody's uh, no, information, there's also brands like uh, more, uh, I think more, not when we were young, when we were kids, but these days there's jabakare, right? That's also. Uh -huh. And there's right. kokumaro kare. <laughs> yes, so many. I think this uh, is yes, golden, yes, right? golden kare. Yes, yeah, but, that's the one. Yes, but I think <laughs> SNB and House are two big kareru makers in Japan. Sorry to stop, stop you. Oh, no problem. So because of the, you know, uh, Baramon curry, they say they use honey and apple. Mm -hmm. So this curry grabbed the children's heart. Children <laughs> fell in love with this sweet, sweeter yeah. taste curry. Yes. Okay. So let me start this uh, pan is so quite warm and of course I'm just following exactly the box says how to all right it only needs one tablespoon of oil that this is it good and you put this all, all the vegetable together But sometimes you need to um, stir, but to speed up cooking, I will put the lid on it. Okay, so what is katsukare? Well, katsu means uh, cutlet. 
Okay, as you can see, so next to curry sauce, there is a pork cutlet. And I think this uh, portion is also a loin, pork loin. And uh, in the store, okay, so these are the ingredients. And I, while this is cooking, see? so uh, to make katsu, this is a pork loin. So I put this katsu in between two plastic sheets. And uh, please take a look at this uh, picture of a pork. Okay, so take a look at this loin. And underneath green part is fillet portion, it's more lean. So if you prefer leaner meat, you can also use fillet portion. And uh, when you find the, the pork loin for pork chop, it tend to be thicker than I like. So I use a little you know, block of loaves, loin portion and cut it according to my likings. So this time it's not so thick, okay? And to, to make this cutlet, I show you what you need. One egg, and let me break it into a bowl. And uh, typically we go through a three steps, like I put this, uh, uh, Pork, pork, pork loin into a flour and dredge into egg, then to panko. But this time, let's make it simple. And I mix flour, this is a quarter cup of flour into egg. And mix. And if it's too thick, you add water to make it a little, little more running like butter. Okay, can you see? Okay. And, uh, Here is my panko. Okay. And keep it ready. And let's uh, spice up the pork. Before doing that, I will open it a little bit. And salt and pepper. One side, salt and pepper according to your likings, a little bit of salt and cover. And with the meat tender, you pound. Plastic wrap, it's easier to clean plus you can prevent the cross contamination on the cutting board. And this side also, let me do a little bit of salt and pepper. So Akiko-san, hey. when people could cook katsu on its own, right? Like you, um, for instance, you could have made katsu last night, yes. kept a few and made curry tonight, right? You don't oh, necessarily sure. have to make it the same day, obviously. Oh, you can, you know, after you make katsu and the, you, you know, after deep frying it, you can even freeze it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Then reheat in the oven yes. and it's, it's quite good. Very true. Very oh. true. Like the deep frying, it seems like a little, you know, little bit of job. So you don't want to do it just only for one tonkatsu, one cutlet. You may like to do two or four. Or more. Yeah, <laughs> oh, and the freeze. Okay, so this is done. Uh, let, me, 
we can also put it in obento too, right? Katsu. Oh, absolutely, Katsu. absolutely. Yeah. Let me check this curry. I mean the vegetable. So Akiko-san, I, I see you're cooking the vegetable or you're cooking the curry in a Dutch oven. Do you, we actually, mm. we also do it too. So what do you think um, is good about cooking it in a Dutch oven? Obviously it doesn't have to, you know, sometimes we cook it in a frying pan, you know, other people do it in stainless pans. So you can practically cook curry uh, in anything, but what mm. do you think is sort of like uh, nice about cooking it in a Dutch oven? I find, you know, this uh, will kind of shorten the cooking time because it's the uh, pot is quite thick and retains the heat quite well. Yes, yes, I agree. So, I also feel like with Dutch, like if it's a frying pan, I kind of, you know, have to stir it often mm. versus, you know, lazy moms like I. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Me too. Know, put it in a Dutch oven and then you put a lid on and then you just have to open the lid once in a while and mix, right? Rather than have to like constantly mix the vegetable. So um, that's that's right. That's exactly so. Like I know water drips like this. Yes, yes, yes. So I can keep it this way here, and then uh, this come cut. This work is over. Let me take it all okay, away. And so what you need next is panko and this butter. So Akiko-san, you mentioned people can obviously do the egg flour panko route. You're choosing to do, to make a batter today, right? You just mix the egg with flour, which is also actually how we do it at my house because um, I, I just want to shorten. I'm a lazy mom. I want to shorten everything. Um, but it, it, it's it's good either way, right? It, it doesn't really matter. Either way, but I find it, you know, to this, just the omitting the first, I mean, the, the three doing in three separate way, this using butter, it does, uh, the crumb sticks to meat better. Ah. Yeah, so it's easier. It makes it easier. Makes it easier. And uh, sometimes, you know, skin just come out from the meat. Yes, 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 yes. So it, it may not happen that way if it's if you use this butter. Wonderful. So what you do is that this is pork, just dredge it. Quite thick like this. And put it in panko. And let me do the second one too. Okay. And I think uh, by doing this, you'll be using less flour. Mm, good point. Mm. And you have because to wash one less thing. That's true. <laughs> that's very true. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. How which should the flour egg mixture be? How thick? Uh, it's like, you know, like this much. If it's too thin, you know, it will not coat the meat so well. So it's to make it thick enough. So suppose you found it, it's too thin, you just add a little more flour. Right. But and it's it like this. If it becomes too thick, you can also add a little bit water. Oh, right? yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thick enough so that when you, just like when Akiko san lifted, the batter kind of sticks a little bit to the whatever you're using to lift it up with, I think it's the kind of a good thickness. The reason why um, you don't want it, like Akiko san was saying, the reason why you don't want it too thin is because it, then the batter doesn't stick very well to the meat. But the other reason why you don't want to make it too thick is then the koromo or the surface becomes too too thick actually when you um, 
when you uh, end up with the katsu and then you wonder, am I eating just the coating or am I eating the meat, you know? So just the right thickness of the batter does make, I think, a huge difference in the end result of the katsu. Yeah, thank you, Elisa san exactly. So I just uh, put the panko both sides. And the other day when I didn't have panko, which is Japanese panko, I used um, the soda cracker. I put it into a food processor and make it almost like a flour and use it and became a very, very crispy, oh, nice, um, yeah, finish. And if you have like a leftover bread, you mm. can use it as panko. But if you do use the sweet bread, then when you fly it becomes, you know, it gets burnt very quickly. Mm -hmm. So be careful. And uh, what is suggested to make it very crispy is to keep it in the fridge for like 10 minutes mm -hmm. to make this uh, a panko a little moist. But if you don't have time, you can use water. Mm -hmm. The question, what is panko made of? uh it's it's a bread it's a yeah, bread ground literally pan 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 means bread ko means flour or flourly things so panko right. is literally um uh crumbs not crumbs i shouldn't say crumbs it's literally kind of you know flourly thing made out of bread so s some people like akiko-san was saying like if you have leftover bread some people actually just grind it in a food processor and um, some of my friends actually keep it in the fridge freezer uh -huh. because you know when you're it's when it's not a store bought panko and just you know homemade bread for instance it in order for her to keep it longer I know she makes panko and then just keeps it in the freezer forever oh. not forever forever obviously but for a long time okay so let me do uh, add water to the vegetable. Vegetable is becoming much um, softer. And this is exactly like three cups of water. So Aksan, there's a question. If somebody wanted to make chicken katsu, is this yes. still the same recipe? Yes, same. So just, just use chicken instead of pork? Yes. Uh, and the other day I also used the salmon. Mm. Exact same butter and panko then there will be salmon katsu. Salmon katsu, yes. All right, so I added water into the vegetable. Can you also use like wheat panko, like wheat bread, make panko? Sure, sure. Sure, and sometimes, you know, if, if it's not tonkatsu, you can use like a cornflakes mm. as a crumb. Fine. Okay, so let me just uh, spray water. This is water, it's not uh, soap, okay? <laughs> and both sides. Okay, and then here I am heating um, oil. And the professional Tonkatsu place, they use a lot of oil, but I didn't, I'm not using so much of oil. Maybe like, I think it's like less than an inch. Yeah, much less than an inch. Okay. And the temperature is supposed to be 360 degrees. And here I do have thermometer. This is candy thermometer. So let's make sure it is hot enough. And, uh, and also when you are doing deep frying, please make sure you have a cover for the pot. Suppose some, you know, thing happens, the oil become too hot or whatever. So you just make sure you have something to cover. Okay. And it takes, 
with some time to not yet. I wonder how how often people do deep frying at home. So interesting thing, I I I often do not deep fry only mm. because as everybody knows, I'm a lazy mom and I hate cleaning up the kitchen after I deep fry because everything gets oily. But my husband loves deep frying. So oh. ever since um, deep fried food. So ever since, you know, mid-March when we've all been spending more time at home, we've been eating a lot more deep fried food. And <sighs> has also been showing on our weight. Like I think my, my husband and I have gained uh, lots of weight because we've been eating deep fried food maybe once a week because he's been cooking more because he's been home for more. <laughs> I see. Okay, let's, let's see the temperature is going up. So in mm. terms of yeah. deep fried Japanese food, there's obviously tonkatsu that we're making today. There's mm -hmm. karaage, right? Japanese style fried chicken. Yep. There's obviously tempura, mm -hmm. right? Um, when you think about it, uh, Japanese people deep fry a lot of things. Yes, that's true. We have a question. Oh. Are you using vegetable oil? Yes, I'm using vegetable oil. Have you okay. ever tried making tonkatsu with an air fryer? Sure, sure, you can. And actually in the exhibit, I have shared the information of uh, cooking tonkatsu in oven. So you can also use air flyer. But what to do is to this panko, you fry, dry fry uh, panko with a little bit of oil. Okay, so this is a tonkatsu step that I'm exactly following. And uh, deep fry, I mean, Oven baked tonkatsu recipe is also there. Yes. So the most important, we also at home do oven baked tonkatsu. And mm -hmm. this first step is important, right? To toast the panko in the frying pan, because if you yeah. don't do it, it doesn't brown. So, um, and it, it, right. it doesn't look good or taste good. Actually, if you don't, if you, if you omit this, um, pan frying, the to you know, toasting the panko, if you're making it in an oven, I think it's very important. Yeah, the uh, color becomes more, how do you say, uniform. You can put the breadcrumb and the spray oil and the, oh, I mean, air, uh, what is that? Air fry? That is possible. But sometimes the color does not become even. Yes, very true. So if you take this step, then uh, the color will become, you know, uh, similar all over. So let me put it in the oil. Oil became as hot as 360 degrees. And as, as Akiko-san mentioned in the presentation, the huge difference between deep frying your uh, tonkatsu and oven, baking in an oven is Absolutely, if you deep fry it, it's much crunchier, isn't it? it? It's that, as we say in Japanese, the saku, saku, that onomatopoeia of, of, you know, when you cut it or when you eat it, you have that crunchiness, you definitely lose when you oven, bake it in oven. However, there are two uh, really big merits of doing it in an oven. And one is because you use less oil, it's less calories. So if for some health reason you have to um, watch your weight, um, you can still enjoy your tak, uh, tonkatsu with a little less oil if you bake it. And also, again, I think this is the first, a third time I'm saying this, for lazy moms like myself, it's less to clean up afterwards, right? Because it's in the oven and you're not deep frying and you're not getting oil all over your kitchen. So there's, there's pros and cons, I think, to baking it in an oven or deep frying. Mm -hmm. So can you see what's going on in the pan? Yes. So Akiko-san, isn't it true that in the beginning, the bubbles are very big and lots of bubbles? Yes. So don't move so much like this. 
that's only this time. So I will just flip it. And uh, my uh, pork loin was a very, it's not that thick. So it will not take too long to be, to get it cooked. And this is, just turn it over. And the meanwhile, I think uh, curry here is ready for curry roux. Mm. Uh, so when you put this paste in, you remove from the heat. I switch off the heat or remove from the heat. And uh, there are six cubes. So I think one is for one portion. I'm putting all six. Then you start mixing without heating up. This will help to make a, a thicker sauce. Okay. They say when it's cooked, it becomes a little lighter in weight. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice color. So because it's a pork, you need to cook it through. Mm -hmm. But since it's, you know, thin enough. Just like, I don't know how many minutes I deep fried. Maybe four minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So katsu is done. Like this looks delicious. <laughs> So this is uh, two together. Together it's a hundred gram. And uh, if you eat two of them, you can get 20 grams of protein. Nice. <laughs> okay. So let me show you. So I'm not at heating, but let me see if it's properly melting. Right. So Akiko-san, you, yes. uh, is it correct? You didn't put any meat in your curry because no. this is katsukare. The katsu is the meat for the curry. Correct. Yes. So if you don't do, uh, you know, katsu, you can add chicken or pork or beef um, in this one. Right. You can have it just as a vegetable curry, but you can also do pork curry. You can do chicken curry. I guess you could also do seafood curry, right? If you put like shrimps yes. and, and cuttlefish. Yes. Yes. Correct. So when you cook meat, it's kind of recommended to cook, sear the meat first, mm. then add vegetable, vegetable okay. and cook. So if it's chicken or pork or beef, sear the, the meat before you add the vegetable in your pan. Yeah, I, that I will prefer to do so. And the here, I think the curry is basically vegetarian. I don't see any, and vegetarian is it. There's no meat ingredients in the roux, the mm. paste. Oh. So this curry is a vegetarian curry. Oh, that's great. So see, by mixing it becoming very thick. Mm -hmm. So it's so basically done, but it cooked a little bit longer. Okay, so let us talk about the uh, curry's history. <laughs> the first, first, most in, you know important ingredient is the pepper. 
And uh, pepper is from originally from India. And that's what everybody was wanted to go to India. And the Columbus tried and he thought he reached India, but it was West Indies. So he could not uh, get to pepper. But to Japan, all this uh, spices or curry, curry spices came with the uh, British um, ship, like East India Company. And uh, they were using those spices on the ship uh, because those uh, voyage was quite long and the spices help to keep this meat and other stuff last longer. And uh, so while Japan was close to overseas country, um, as early as 1613, um, in Nagasaki, southern part of Japan, they were getting some spices from British ship. This is to make it a little touch of India. And uh, here I recommend to use cumin. The cumin is originated from uh, Egypt, not from India. But if you have smelt the cumin seed, you immediately imagine, oh, it's curry. <laughs> That's a major fragrance of curry. Two, to, uh, when I cook this with some Indian um, spice, I use this onion, um, minced onion, and to speed up my cooking, I put it in the microwave for like a 10 minutes. Mm. Then uh, fly with oil. And this time for this same amount of onion, I added two tablespoons of oil instead of one. And uh, when this uh, onion gets brown, and then I add cumin seed, just a tablespoon of cumin seed. Then add vegetable and cook, then half done, then add water, just like we did today. So I love this variation of curry. We just found out about this maybe, uh, maybe like a year ago. Um, it really, it's still Japanese curry rice, but it definitely transforms, doesn't it? It, it, I, it makes it, you're right. I think the addition of cumin makes it feel a lot more closer to, you know, Indian curry or, you know, curry from, from other parts of Asia. This is a really fun variation. It definitely um, adds flavor and also a lot of uh, smell. So I would say this is jōkyū shano kare, meaning um, advanced level <laughs> Japanese curry. So once you're all, you know, uh, you know, once you've all been doing a lot of Japanese curry, I highly recommend this variation. This is really fun. Okay, so please try this. Uh, um, the brown um, caramelized onion also adds so much depth to it. Okay, uh, so let's move on to okay. So there's some talk about uh, um, curry. Uh, first of all, this, the Dr. William Clark, he is from, he was from Amherst, Massachusetts, and he was invited to Japan to teach Japanese uh, youngster how to do farming, etc. But Japan was hungry because uh, hungry for knowledge and uh, because the country was close to overseas, like 200 years. And he was invited to go to Hokkaido, the red portion, the Northern part of Japan. And he saw the young people rather skinny and uh, not well, they are not getting enough nutrition, he thought. So he made it the rule at the dormitory, okay, Young people, you have to eat curry at least once a week. And he started to use the Hokkaido's original uh, Hokkaido native vegetable, which is onion, potato, and carrot. And right today, for Japanese curry, normally has to have these three vegetables. 
So it was very interesting. It's a very good and interesting connection with Massachusetts where we are. And uh, during this uh, uh, Japan, under from 700, mid 700 uh, for about 1200 years, uh, emperor ordered Japanese people not to eat meat such as a cow or a horse meat because they help you know, to do farming. So the people were not eating. But later on, uh, some people in Kyushu area to start with, they started to eat pork because they needed the stamina and energy. And the uh, pork, pigs are more like a domestic animal and it was easier to raise. And uh, let's go, there's a three famous curry brand. Number one is house, the one we are using today. Um, at the beginning, they, the, the maker of this curry named this curry home curry, home curry. But somehow it did not uh, sound well. So his wife suggested, call it house, house curry instead. And number two, Guliko, which I don't have it right now here, but they are a famous uh, confectionery company and they were selling chocolate, comes in cubes. So they came up with the idea to make this curry sauce sold in this choco chocolate like, look like curry. And the number three is SNB. Uh, it's a golden curry we have here, which is also very famous. And the house curries current president, I heard that the, he got a uh, management degree from Boston University. So another close contact with Massachusetts. Okay. So right, I'm forgetting about Guriko. Guriko is another really famous curry roux, right? You're right. Yes. They're, they are the three SMB, Guriko and House are the three big ones. Correct, correct. And isn't SMB originally a spice? They were a spice uh, make, not maker, but an importer of spices. I, I heard that they originally were actually uh, uh, selling curry uh, powder way yes. back when, right? That's right. That's correct. So this is the one, the founder of SMB company. Oh, that's the this powder. Powder. This is the powder he created and it's still same, I think. Mm -hmm. This was, uh, came up in the market. He put in the market in 1923. Wow. And he was 20 years old. Wow. And same package, isn't it? Like- Yes, I same remember, package. Yeah, I remember that from my childhood, but I guess way, even way before that, right? 1923. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So I read that he was working for a soup company, um, uh, curries, I mean sauce company. So he came to know about the spices there. Then he decided, okay, I have to make it my own curry spice mix. Wow. So it's still here. 1923, 1920, yes. did you say 1923? Wow. 1923, yes. I see a, I see a video from Sarah Clevering. I, that looks beautiful. May I show how what you cook? I saw your katsu. Oh, wow. We think, it, we think it looks pretty good. We're a little afraid of cooking with oil, so this is good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you don't need too much oil to cook. Oh. So, so the last picture, the third picture you see, Rash Bihari Bose, he is from Kolkata, India. And uh, he came to, went to Japan it's 1915, uh, because at that time, India was uh, fighting for their own independence. And uh, he moved to Japan to fight from outside of India. And then he was very much supported by the owner of Nakamura restaurant. And eventually he got married to his daughter. And even uh, Nakamuraya it has a very beautiful restaurant and shop right in the center of Tokyo. And uh, both 
Okay, he's from India. The curry is the must have almost every day. So missing his uh, curry, he was cooking uh, authentic Indian curry at home. And uh, at the same time, he was serving his family and friends. Uh, then uh, his father-in-law, Nakamura's owner, really, really liked it. And they decided to uh, serve it at their restaurant. And the two house and the SMB curry party sauce, it made it very easy for anyone to cook at home. And but the both served in a little more um, authentic, uh, richer style. So that you can see on the picture next slide. Like this, okay. You, so here at the Nakamura, they don't serve curry sauce over the rice. They'll serve it separately. And this is actually Indian style. If you go to India, you will not see curry, you know, served on rice and delivered to you. No, you put curry sauce on top of your rice as you like. Okay. So that's the fun thing about curry, isn't it, Akko-san? Because it is such a um, um, home food, sort of, you know, like it's like we all grew up with eating curry rice that mom makes, right? And yet it's also when you go to a restaurant, it is refined food. Right mm -hmm. when you go to a proper like Nakamura's curry rice is nothing like your mom's curry, <laughs> you know, much more refined. So um, the next time you are in Japan, you must also try curry rice at a restaurant because it is going to be very different from the curry rice that you'll be cooking at home. Right. If you if you if it's in India, curry means sauce. Mm -hmm. So so I eat curry today. Then. Indian people say curry, it's just a sauce, right? So in Japan, the curry means Japanese curry. Right, right. So and as you different. mentioned, so that's the fun facts about Japanese curry, right? You mentioned earlier in your slide that it first came from British, uh, British people brought it like originally, originally um, yeah. because they were eating that on their ship correct? Because they, correct. they were doing business with India and they would travel all the way to Japan. And that was the first time that Japanese people ever saw this dish called curry. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, very often uh, a lot of people talk about how Japanese people are really good about adopting something and then adapting it to, to their, you know, lifestyle to, or to their culture or to their, the food that's available in Japan. And then adapting it, making a you know it, it a step further. Uh, the kaizen, kaizen, yeah, kaizen, improving it. So I think mm -hmm. even curry is a sample of that, right? Like it, it's a very beautiful, actually, um, ex, um, example of how it is a dish that is really well known. Everybody in Japan, I think, grows up with curry, unless you have some sort of allergy to something that's in there, um, you know. Um, but I think, I think everybody grows up eating curry. And yet it is such, when you look at its history, it is such a beautiful mixture of lots of different cultures. Yes, very much so, I agree. Yeah. And uh, India, uh, in case of curry, like here in the curry root, I'm sure there is a flour portion. Flour is mixed into it so that it thickens the sauce. But in India, um, you don't use flour to thicken the sauce. So that is kind of different. And uh, so, yes, curry is even called as Japanese national food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, have anyone went been to uh, Gogo curry in um, Central Square? There's a curry shop in H Mart. Yes, Gogo Kare, yeah. Gogo Kare, yeah. That is from Kanazawa, uh, oh, Japan. Yeah. But I recently heard that they are also opening a shop in India. Oh, wow. That is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. wonderful. Cool, yeah. <laughs> cool. 
Akiko Sensei, uh, New Hi. Hampshire out of Hogan uh, We lived in Tokyo for five years. Uh, both of our children were born there. Oh my and goodness. As nice as it is to go to a really nice formal restaurant, I love uh, like katsu kare as fast food, like mm. koko ichibanya, gogo, or uh, matsuya kare. Yeah, I love oh. gogo kare. It's so good. <laughs> So good. You know what? I've never been to Koko Kare. I'd love to go. Akiko-san, you've never been to Koko Kare? Oh no. my goodness. You Last have time to we went to Koko Kare, it was in Japan. I mean, not Japan, uh, Boston. Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. Good. Nice Thank to know. You. Thank you very much. This has been uh, great. Uh, we've tried to make uh, katsu kare at home for years, and we never got the cut quite right. But realizing we needed to use the pork loin, it's, it's yeah. so different. It's so much better. So thank you very much. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you for joining us from New Hampshire. Oh, thank New you. Hampshire. Okay. It's a good. Bye. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank so, you. so shall we start katsu curry? Yes, please. No? Please serve okay. it. Yes. Okay. So, now we have. The meantime, Masayo-san also gave us a comment, comment that she also does uh, the kare udon. Oh. Right now, it's the kare, and then instead of rice, udon, then make kare udon. Very popular now. <laughs> yes. Actually, uh, whenever we make curry in our house, we make lots of curry. First night, we do yeah. curry rice, right? Second wow. night, yeah. or actually second lunch, second day lunch, we do kare udon. And then <laughs> usually we don't have any more curry because everybody eats so much curry. But if we have curry rest, left we sometimes also do kare uh, somen so udon is mm. thicker somen is thinner noodle um so we do kare somen um at night but usually we don't reach the kare somen part because by kare udon no more curry left <laughs> that's, that's good okay so everybody you know we should be eating the same exact same taste curry tonight i think <laughs> we have one more question. Uh, how do the yeah. Indians uh, make curry thicker? Okay. Uh, sometimes I uh, use um, nuts, mm. like cashew nuts. And sometimes I use uh, almonds. Mm, okay. And also I uh, use a lot more onion. Mm. And also sometimes some ingredients too, right? Like I feel like um, Indian curry that has potato, I feel like they're, they become a little bit thicker because of the potato um, starchiness. Uh, you're right. Yeah, you can say that. I'm sure it's not, it's meant not meant to be that. It's probably mm. just goro goro shiteru, goro goro shiteru as in uh, Chunky? Chunky, chunky, chunky potatoes. Okay, so let me cut this katsu. Hear that? That's when we say in Japanese, saku, saku, that noise. Yeah, crispy, crispy. So I heard that the pork cutlet is this whole thing. And if I cut it so that you can eat with chopstick, then we call it tonkatsu. I love that information. <laughs> Interesting. Now that it's cut, it's pork cutlet. Cutlet, yeah. Mm. And actually at the Whole Foods, I saw a pork loin cut for pork cutlet, so much thinner. Ooh, it's cut nice. thinly, yeah. So if you want to make pork cutlet, there is, you know, you can buy it that way. Oh, I love the katsukare from the Hogan family. Can you show show it to us again? Wow. <laughs> wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Bon appetit. Yeah. OK, so let me do mine. Yes, very good. So I've noticed another kind of fun uh, thing about Kare and, and Japanese and Japanese families. So I saw uh, Akiko-san 
have a, you know, she had a plate, she had rice on one side, but she left a little space without rice. You know, that right. some families leave space where there's no rice, so you can put the sauce. Some, some families have rice in the whole plate and curry all over. <laughs> curry is such a, depending on the family, it's also different. So that was another fun thing growing up because my family used haosu that Akiko-san just used today. My best friend's family always used SMB. And SMB, I think, is a little spicier. So her curry oh. and, and her family had cut it all over the rice. My family, just like Akiko-san, made a little space, yes. So even simple thing as cut it, there's variations in the house. Almost, I think, like mac and cheese for Americans, right? Because I've had different people use different cheese. You know, some people uh, you put breadcrumbs on top, some don't. Um, mm. You know, I think it's the same thing. Depending on the house, the curries look and taste a little bit different. Right. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, Akiko-san's curry. Let's cut it. <laughs> and here, today I made it. Oh, こうやるのかな? Do you see? Yes. Okay. Um, I made it a little more like a feast. <laughs> Can you see? Yes. What? What? What are they? I see egg. Okay. So this is like a condiment, egg, a chopped, uh, what is that, peppers. Fun. And uh, this is the corn, as you can see. And um, this is the sprouts, homegrown sprouts. Nice. And this is uh, fukujinzuke. fukujinzuke. This is the must must have for Japanese curry, yes, as adult. many of you must know. Yes, I didn't like it as a kid, but as an adult, <coughs> yes, now it's a must. It, you <laughs> it, um, and normally it's much more red. Hmm? Akiko-san, what is fukujinzuke made of? I think this is a uh, radish. Radish, radish, yeah, right? Yeah. So radish. Uh, um, it's a pickled, oh. uh, not as in vinegar pickled, but pickled radish. And nobody, you know, much more red, mm -hmm. but I think uh, this is more healthy without yes. using a chemical red. This, yeah, uh, this uh, pickles you can buy at the Japanese store. Fun. So it becomes like little feast. Nice, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Akko-san. That looks wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, any questions um, about how to cook or about curry in general, where to buy stuff? Uh, I, I, so, uh, I, when I cook curry, always it becomes uh, uh, watery. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I might be broken English. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't become a, a, a doro doro. I don't know how to explain in English. Yes, yes. Actually, that's a great question, right? Because um, I've had that question before too. Sometimes curry is very liquidy. Like, mm. you know, my curry turned out to be so liquidy. What went wrong? Okay. So it seems like when you add this Japanese curry roux, curry uh, paste, stop the heat. Then, Keep it, keep the pot away from the heat and dissolve it fully. Then put it back. So it seems like that's the key. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I heard that the curry tastes much better the following day. Yes. But it's thicker, right? The following day. Thicker and the, maybe the, the taste become better. But uh, one, um, method you can take is that uh, cook it and cool it and then cook it. So cook, cooling it once, that makes the taste better. So if you cook in the morning and let it cool and heat it again in the night, then it's already you have a better tasting curry. Nice, nice, nice tips. Mm. 
Any Fantastic. other questions? Yeah, any other questions from anyone? Yeah. This morning I was reading an article about cookie dough, the same kind of thing. It said, make your cookie dough and then put it in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes overnight up to 72 hours. It makes it much better. I haven't tried that yet, but same oh. kind of thing. Yeah, That's absolutely. Good. Same kind of thing. Can you show us your... Um, uh, 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 Sorry, Michelle, you were you were just saying. Can you show us your finished product again? Your okay, sure. Uh, can you see? Yes. Oh. So, so you put the rice on one side, and then right you put on another side, and then you put the meat on both, sort of. Right. So quick. See. Um, yeah. So that this one you can have, you know, your own style, like you go some saying. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I was growing up, we did rice in the whole plate. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's like my best friend's family, rice on the whole plate. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love those variations, right? It, it, it depends on the family. Um, <clears throat> Nakamura-san, you were asking another question. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, uh, to fry a uh, katsu, uh, what is the ratio of uh, oil and water? Uh, uh, to, to fry, to fry your katsu. To fry, just uh, so I didn't know how much oil. You... How much oil? Um, uh, like uh, you don't have to. How do you say? You don't need too much oil. Uh, let's see. Today, today I use the less than an inch. Like my katsu is katsu is this much thickness. It's not perfect. So maybe 1.5 times, you know, as long as it's a 80% of meat goes in the oil, that is fine. Right. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Akiko-san. Today is Hi. great. And I'm wondering, if you make a Indian kale, do you use a ghee oil? Yes, I do. Uh, it's a clarified butter. It's a butter almost without any water liquid, water portion. So it's very thick and very flavorful and uh, use a small like, you know, last minute thing I do because uh, it has a very nice flavor. Mm -hmm. So at the end, you just pour a little bit or even on rice. Mm. And if you're cooking a lot, some people do use a uh, lot of ghee to start with. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. do that, but sometimes the taste becomes too rich. I see. Yeah, so I think it, cooking method is different according to which part of India you are from. I see. Interesting. Okugafukai, as we say in Japanese, yeah. very deep. Very deep, right. And India is big too. So very different type of food they eat. Yes. I, I have one last question, if I may, Akiko-sensei. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you would like to add the, to the, the spiciness of mm. uh, your curry roux, what do you mm. use? Uh, for Japanese curry, I will put chili powder, mm. red chili. And if you do have, you can add the chopped green chilies. Mm. Okay, then thank you very much. Gives you a more kind of, you know, as a fresh, hot taste. Okay. And the green chili is yes. good for you because it has a lot of vitamin C. Mm. So thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank it's you. delicious. Thank you. You, delicious. <laughs> oh, you're using, eating with <laughs> chopstick. Good. Good for you. Fantastic. And it's thank good you. because I dipped in the sauce. Yoga, enjoy. <laughs> Uh, so let me introduce you our next uh, cooking events instructor. She is Masayo Kawaguchi, and she'll be doing Yosenabe. And she's here with us. So Masayo-san, uh, can Hi. you just quickly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit of Yosenabe so we, uh, we can get everybody excited? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Masayo Kawaguchi. Uh, I used to live in New York 23 years and moved to Boston two years ago. And I used to live in Tokyo and Fukuoka and also Osaka. So Yosenabe, I'm gonna uh, 
study more about Yosenabe or Yosenabe history. Maybe it started the Edo period, so 300 years ago. And then Yosenabe, so many kinds of ingredients, how to eat, very different way. But uh, I'm gonna you know, present you like home cooking. Usually I do my home, a Yosenabe, so it tastes good. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. So see you there at the January 30th. I, I heard about it. Yes. Yoroshiko Negaishimasu. Yoroshiko Negaishimasu is our next cooking um, class, online cooking class. It'll be Yosenabe. And it's going to be fantastic because it'll be perfect. Yosenabe is perfect for the winter time. It's, it's sort of like a, um, it's sort of like a hot pot Japanese style. Definitely, you know, something that Japanese families eat during the winter time. So look forward to our January 30th class. And as we are closing, we would like to, I would love to also uh, once again, give a big um, um, thank you to Akiko-san. That was fantastic. Um, I'm so happy we were able to introduce <laughs> Japanese katsukare and, and what a beautiful presentation it was. So thank you very much, Akiko-san. And, um, and one last huge thank you to all of you who have come and joined us because this is no fun without having you all here. So thank you again for coming and we look forward to seeing you all on January 30th uh, for our next uh, cooking class. どうもありがとうございます。どうもありがとうございます。じゃあね。じゃあね、カメアゲン、またきてね。よろしくお願いします。はい。お願いします。はい。はい。さよなら。バイバイ。